to the world of textiles. Today, we are here to discuss standardization in the field of textiles. But what do we mean by textiles? Does textiles mean only the apparels and the dress material that we see around? You will be amazed to learn that the word textile has so many connotations in the field. The textile scenario is rapidly changing from apparels and household industry to high-tech area of industry and medical applications. Remarkable innovations that follow existing trends and set future trends are being applied in making highly technical textiles for high-tech applications. Standards are very important to cater to the requirement of the industry as well as the consumers. The basis of any kind of certification is standard and BIS has been assigned the responsibility of making standards for all kind of conventional and technical textiles. Allow me to introduce to you Dr. Arindam Basu, Director General Northern India Textile Research Association NITRA and Chairman Textiles Division Council who will enlighten you with his deep insights in the evolution of national standards in textiles. BIS has so far published around 1400 standards under the Textile Division Council which are related to cotton, wool, silk, man-made fibers, handloom, khadi and various kinds of technical textiles and textile machinery and accessories. Over the last few years, the work of standardization has been mainly focused on technical textiles as these are identified critical thirst areas of Government of India in terms of infrastructure development security of nation and food security. We have till now published 501 Indian standards on technical textiles and many projects are in pipeline. There are various sectional committees in relevant technical areas composed of manufacturers, organized consumers, government and regulatory bodies, research and development institutions, testing laboratories, technical and educational institutions and others as domain experts. They all put their head together and a comprehensive process and lots of consultations are followed to reach a consensus which forms the basis of a standard. It is really wonderful to see the enormous work done by the textiles department of BIS in the field of standardization in textiles. The work of standardization is undertaken under the guidance of textiles division council. Let's meet Mr. A.K. Berra, scientist F and Head Textile, who leads the efforts of standardization in textiles and hear from him. Technical textiles are textile materials and products used for their technical performance and functional properties. Technical textiles are different from the conventional textiles and unlike conventional textiles used traditionally for clothing or furnishing, technical textiles are used mostly by other user industries. Depending on the product characteristics, functional requirements and end-use applications, the highly diversified range of technical textiles products have been grouped into various categories such as Agrotech, Protech, Meditech, Geotech, Indutech, Pactech, etc. And BIS makes standards for all these. Let us now discuss some of the areas where BIS had made remarkable contributions in the field of textiles and we start with Agrotech or Agrotextiles. Agrotech is very important technical textile category of products used in agriculture, horticulture, fisheries, animal husbandry and forestry. Here, I would like Sri J.K. Gupta to tell us something about a few important standards published on Agrotextiles. BIS has so far published 19 standards on agrotextiles, which include lay flat tube for drip irrigation system, tobacco harvester gloves, shade nets, etc. IS 16627 2017 on HDP laminated woven lay flat tube for use in mains and sub mains of the drip irrigation system prescribes the requirement of two types of lay flat tubes made from multi layer laminated fabric of minimum 400 GSM and 550 GSM. As per the standard, the material needs to be UV stabilized by adding suitable UV stabilizers or carbon black. This standard also prescribe hydrostatic bust pressure test, proof pressure test, kink test and pressure impulse test of 10,000 cycles as performance requirement. Another very important standard published in the agrotextile sector is IS 16390 on nylon knitted seamless gloves for tobacco harvesters. 
टबैको फार्मिंग एक्चुअली प्रोवाइड ए लॉट ऑफ यूनिक हेजार्ड्स मोस्ट नोटेबली द एक्यूट निकोटीन पॉइजनिंग ए कंडीशन ऑल्सो नोन एज द ग्रीन टबैको सिकनेस इट अकर्स वैन वर्कर्स एब्जॉर्ब निकोटीन थ्रू द स्किन एंड एज दे कम इन टू कॉन्टैक्ट विद द लीव्स ऑफ द मेच्योर टबैको प्लांट यूज ऑफ दिस निटेड सीमलेस नाइलॉन ग्लव्स बाय द वर्कर्स वाइल कल्टिवेटिंग एंड हार्वेस्टिंग द टबैको प्लांट कैन सिग्निफिकेंटली रिड्यूस द अब हजार दिस स्टैंडर्ड आई एस वन सिक्स थ्री नाइन जीरो टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन प्रिस्क्राइब द कंस्ट्रक्शन डिटेल एंड परफॉर्मेंस रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ निटेड सीमलेस ग्लव्स मेड फ्रॉम क्रिम नाइलॉन यान विद ए मिनिमम रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ड्राई एंड वेट टेनेसिटी ऑफ थ्री ग्राम्स पर डीनियर मेडिकल टेक्सटाइल और मेडिटेक इज अनदर एरिया ऑफ टेक्निकल टेक्सटाइल्स वेर रिमार्केबल वर्क हैज बीन डन बाय बी आई एस ओवर द यर्स द यूज ऑफ टेक्सटाइल मटीरियल्स फॉर मेडिकल एंड हेल्थ केयर प्रोडक्ट्स रेंजेस फ्रॉम सिंपल गॉज और बैंडेज मटीरियल्स टू स्काफोल्ड फॉर टिश्यू कल्चरिंग एंड अ लार्ज वेराइटी ऑफ प्रोसेस फॉर परमानेंट बॉडी इम्प्लांट As many as 67 India standards have been published by BIS on medical textiles. They also find a place in the regulatory framework of the country and are widely followed in the healthcare sector. Let's also hear the valued opinion of Association of Indian Manufacturers of Medical Devices on the extensive work done on standardization in the medical textiles. Uh, Bureau of Indian Standards have been a major game changer for medical textile industry. as we all are aware that when covid struck india uh, like almost every nation india was unprepared in a short span of time a lot of indian manufacturer did come up but again there was a issue of the quality so this is where bis did a great job they immediately intervened and created some minimal interim standards uh, to elevate the quality and the standards of the pp kits and the other materials which are supplied bureau of indian standards have done a great nation service of not only educating the manufacturer of what is needed but by also creating standards where each manufacturer will understand that what are the global requirements medical textiles products are omnipresent in the field of human hygiene and medical procedures two of the very commonly used products which have been accorded high importance in the recent past years are sanitary napkins and surgical masks the standards published on both product have been in great demand Let's hear about these standards from those who have been part of their formulation. It's really great to see that the Bureau of Indian Standards has come up with a long-awaited revision of the standard for sanitary napkins IS 5405. Uh hygiene-related practices of women during menstruation are uh, of significant importance uh as you know health impact in terms of increased vulnerability uh to infections is great during uh, a woman's period. Uh, menstrual hygiene is vital to the empowerment of women and the well-being of women and girls worldwide. Um, protecting them and ensuring the standards are of, uh, you know, the highest level is extremely important. Uh, IS five four zero five was originally published sometime in the eighties, uh, in the sixties, and then again revised in the eighties. Um, the present revision that's been taking place over the past uh, year and a half now includes stuff like uh, hygiene testing requirements. Um, you know checking for common skin pathogens biocompatibility um you know skin irritation cytotoxicity uh sensitization uh it even accounts for the possibility of um antimicrobial performance on pads as well as biodegradability and compostability um that have been prescribed as optional requirements um this means that companies who are making claims have to actually ensure that um their product is meeting a specific international or indian standard um this information on biodegradability compostability etc also needs to be marked on the product so that consumers are well informed before they make a decision um we're extremely happy to be part of this process and look forward to engaging with the, the bureau of indian standards for more um you know more efforts like this let's now move on to another important area protech which covers protective textiles Protective technical textiles are specialty textiles that provide protection to wearer in the hazardous situation like fire and heat, chemical exposure, ballistic protection and another extreme atmosphere condition. The main products include the fire retardant fabrics and apparels, protective clothing for industrial workers, protective clothing and gloves for firefighters, bulletproof jacket, vest, 
हेलमेट एंड पटकास केमिकल प्रोटेक्टिव क्लोदिंग हाई एल्टीट्यूड क्लोदिंग इंडस्ट्रियल ग्लव्स एसेट्रा स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर प्रोटेक्टिव टेक्सटाइल्स एट नेशनल लेवल आर बीइंग फॉर्मुलेटेड बाय द टेक्सटाइल्स प्रोटेक्टिव क्लोदिंग सेक्शनल कमेटी TXD 32 with a mandate to formulate Indian standards for testing and specification for textile protective clothing for protection from fire and other health and life hazards so far 61 standards have been formulated in this area let's hear more about the standards on protective textile from the experts for fighting fire accident more effectively and saving the precious life it is needed to provide the fire fighters suitable fire fighting clothing with apt quality the same is the case for industrial worker who are exposed to heat flame molten metal splashes of iron aluminum etc to ensure the quality of this protective clothing indian standard is 15758 which is in line with iso 9151 has been published in five parts which lay down the standardized test method for heat transmission flame spread and assessment of the resistance of material to heat and flame it would be interested to have a glimpses of how the fire retardant textiles are tested as per the established standards welder spatter protective clothing that is a very very important test in which what we do we we will have a welding uh, rod over here and we burn that rod and we start igniting a fabric sample out of there so we have to test that whether uh, we have to check that whether that fabric uh, sustained in these types of uh, particles or spatter uh, during uh, welding process radiant heat tester is very very important instruments or especially for testing uh, firefighter suits and workwear because uh, especially the worker wearing in foundry and other uh, molten metal uh, industries so what we have to do here what uh, we have to put that sample over in that instruments and there will be uh, radiant heat of approximately 40 kilowatt per meter square we, we will allow to fall that on uh, fabric samples and we have to check that whether uh, and there will be a calorimeter Uh, behind that fabric and we have to check that how much how much time is required to raise uh, temperature of the, that calorimeter 24 degrees celsius that time is very crucial because that time is will give us whether that fabric is good or bad one of the very important standards on protect is is 17051 2018 bullet resistant jackets brj This Indian standard prescribes the minimum performance required for bullet resistant jackets for protection against small arms and ammunition and provides procedure for their evaluation. It also specifies the performance requirements from 6 threat levels level 1 to 6 and can sustain the threat from 7.62 into 39 mm AK47 with hard steel core bullet with impact velocity of 700 m per second and 7.62 into 54R armor piercer in sidri round with impact velocity of 830 meter per second apart from fire and ballistic hazards high tech protective clothing are also required to counter the nuclear biological and chemical threats which are emerging as new year warfare techniques bis has stepped into that arena also let's watch among the weapons of mass destruction the chemical warfare agents are the most brutal were created by the human mankind these chemical warfare agents they are extremely toxic synthetic chemicals which can be dispersed into the form of liquid vapor and aerosol forms they can have either the lethal or incapacitate effect on the human beings now under the textile Tex protective textile sectional committee bis has published in the year 2020 of two ba one uh, standards 17377 which describes about the qualitative and quantitative methods of the breakthrough and permission behavior of the toxicants from protect nbc protective clothing and in this standards uh, sulfur mustard is being used as an toxicants the standards they are based on the rnd which has been done at drd gwalior and this is the nodal laboratory working in the area of various aspects of chemical and biological warfare agents includes the detection protection and decontaminations the publish these uh, uh, indian standards they will provide also provide the relative ranking and the material screening informations about the or uh, test materials about the resistance against the chemical warfare agents in particular of the sulfur mustards 
and their breakthrough behavior. Let's now speak about another interesting area not many people would be aware of. Technical textile materials also play a crucial role in the construction of highways, railway tracks and even dams. These are called geotech or geosynthetics. Geotech products are used in geotechnical applications pertaining to soil, rock, earth etc. The key products in this sector are woven and non-woven geotextiles, geomembranes, geogrids, geocells, geotubes etc. Experts are here to tell us more about the standard on the geomembrane and geogrids. Bureau of Indian Standard has come up with an excellent specification IS 15909 revision 2 for the PVC geomembranes for waterproofing of tunnels, bunkers, basements and various infrastructure projects. Since the projects like tunnels are designed to last more than 100 years, BIS has specified light color for base layers to ensure use of only virgin raw materials. Now project authorities must implement this specification instead of foreign specifications which give scope for the use of recycled material in black base layer. Now coming to natural fibers, do you know that jute, manila and coconut fibers are also used in the manufacture of various technical textile materials? Yes, in the term of usage, production and global consumption, jute is second only to cotton and is widely used in the packaging industry to make Hershian sacks and twine. Polyolefin materials such as high density polythene, HDPE and polypropylene PP are also used as the alternate material for packaging. Indian standard on packaging materials made of jute and polyolefin are widely followed for packaging of food grains, sugar, fertilizer and cement. Let's now learn about some important standards of Pectech from Mr. P. and Murli who is member secretary of jute and jute products sectional committee. IS 12650-2018 and IS 16371-2015 are two very important Indian standards for jute bags for packing 50 kg food grains. These standards are also referred for the procurement of bags by the government agencies under Jute Packaging Materials Act. These standards covers all construction particulars such as ends per decimeter, picks per decimeter, length, width, weight and also the performance characteristics like breaking strength, seam strength, oil content, etc. The sampling plan for the inspection of the testing and criteria for conformity of the bags are also included in these standards. The environmental friendly requirements applicable to the jute have also been incorporated in the standards for labeling the products under optional EcoMark scheme. Similarly, IS 16372-2015 is for jute bags for packing up to 30 kg food grains. BAS has also recently come up with an Indian standards IS 17399-2020 which is for PP HDP laminated woven sacks for mail sorting, storage, transportation and distribution. Till now, the Department of Post has been using the standards for cotton or nylon postal bags for these purposes. And now IS 17399 will provide them a very good alternative. The advantages of laminated woven sacks are high tensile strength, outstanding durability, good dimensional stability, easy handling, partial waterproofing property, improved barrier to moisture, lightweight, good aesthetic and good printability for multicolor graphic images. The sacks as per the standards are categorized under three types as type 1, type 2 and type 3 based on sack dimensions. The weight carrying capacity of all the types of sacks are minimum 35 kg. The different sizes of sacks are required for storage and packing of different bulk, bulk density parcels. These standards defines commonly used terminology, fabric construction, details and uh, specifications, sack description, sack dimension, testing and analysis of sacks and sack performance criteria of these bags. These jute, manila and coir fibers are also widely used to manufacture ropes and cordages along with HDPE and PP fibers. Ropes and cordages made out of other natural and man-made fibers are widely used in shipping and offshore activities. Manila ropes in accordance with IS 1084-2005 
have been in use for quite a long time now by Indian Navy and shipping industries. This standard prescribes the requirements of three types of electromechanically made manila ropes. First, hosser laid ropes of diameter 6 mm to 128 mm, shroud laid ropes of diameter 8 mm to 128 mm, cable laid ropes of diameter 40 to 144 mm. This standard specifies two grades of the ropes on the basis of breaking strength. The recommended safe working loads for ropes employed for lifting purposes are also included in IS1084. Similarly, IS1410-2019 prescribes the requirements of coil ropes of three types, hosser laid ropes of diameter 1, 8 mm to 176 mm, shroud laid ropes of diameter 24 mm to 176 mm, cable laid ropes of diameter 48 to 176 mm. Apart from the standards on technical textiles, BIS continue to formulate standards on conventional textile products, whether it is made up of cotton, wool, silk or any other man-made fibers. These standards are constantly reviewed by experts and revised from time to time and withdrawn if become obsolete. When we talk of conventional textiles, the first name that comes to our mind with national pride is Khadi. The art of handloom and Khadi has helped India to gain independence and shape it into the country it is today. Handloom and Khadi fabrics are a living history book. The first Indian standard published by BIS was also a product of Khadi and that is the national flag of India. You must be aware that the design of our national flag was adopted by the Constituent Assembly of India on 22 July 1947. But you would be fascinated to know that as desired by the Government of India, the first national standard on the national flag was published as Indian Standard 1 in 1951 by the National Flag Sectional Committee of the then ISI. This standard was subsequently revised in 1964 with a view to changing over the completely the dimensions in the metric system subsequent to its adoption by the Government of India. This Indian standard was again revised in 1968. This Indian standard prescribes the design, constitutional detail and other particulars of the national flag of India made of hand-spun and hand-woven cotton khadi bunting. The standard specifies nine different sizes of national flags depending upon the length and the width of the national flag. In the conventional textile sector, the work of BIS doesn't stop at handloom and khadi. There are many more sectional committees who are engaged in the formulating standards related to cotton, wool, silk and man-made fiber textiles. Among them, cotton remains the most important natural textile fiber. For years, Cotton clothing and home furnishing has enhanced our quality of life by providing comfort, expression and individuality. From towels to t-shirt, from bedding to blue jeans, cotton surrounds us on a daily basis. As men advance in textile technology, a variety of man-made fibre were discovered and when blended with cotton, it has been a boon to designers looking for different characteristics in the textiles they use to design their creations with. Just have a look. A very important standard which was required for a long time has been published by BIS in year 2019 and that is IS17266, which is for viscose staple fibres. Viscose is a man-made cellulosic fibre and its properties are quite similar to cotton. This standard also covers modal, which is a second generation regenerated cellulosic fiber, and lyocell, which is a third generation regenerated cellulosic fiber. We understand that already some certification marks license for this product have been granted by BIS. This will help viscose fiber industry to compete with cheaper imports. Another important standard published by BIS is IS17217 in the year 2019, which is for disruptive pattern that is camouflage pattern cloth for jungle operations made of nylon and cotton blended material which we also call as nyco material. Camouflage is the technique used to conceal the presence of a person, piece of equipment or installation by making it blend into its surroundings. 
Since the 1850s, militaries around the world have embraced the concept of camouflage in order to help obscure the visibility and movement of their troops by enemy forces. This standard prescribes all the constructional and performance requirements of this fabric including air permeability and water vapor permeability to ensure comfort of the wearer. Apart from the basic textile raw materials for made-ups and ready-made garments, BIS has done extensive standardization work in apparel sector, which includes size designations, care labeling codes and other quality parameters, keeping pace with the digitization in every sphere of life. BIS has also stepped into digital fittings of apparels and clothings. Let's know more about this. For clothing digital fittings, BIS has published a very innovative standard, IS ISO 18 2025, which is in two parts and is identical with the ISO standards, which relate to the attributes of the virtual human body. The virtual human model exists in various formats in the virtual world and is applied in many different industrial sectors. The virtual human body used in the fashion field reflects the attributes of different areas of the human body based on physical measurements and shape characteristics. Various types of virtual human body based IT fashion convergence technology are being attempted today. According to rapid development of the vast online fashion market, including the internet, mobile market, smart TVs and virtual fittings at shops and stores. Meanwhile, the increased demand of mass customized and made to measure mega garments these days encourages efforts to innovate the traditional process of planning, production and sales. The use of digital technology in this new ubiquitous environment of the international apparel industry is leading to use of three-dimensional information on consumers and digital human bodies. And consumers can now go online anytime, anywhere to try on clothes, evaluate the style, fit and place orders. The Indian standard define a virtual human body to be used to improve online communication and reliability of fashion products sold online and in store through visual confirmation of size, shape, fit and design. This will establish a single index and reference for all virtual garment programs that are currently using various confusing terminology. Another Indian standard, IS, ISO 8559, published by BIS, provides a description of anthropometric measurements that can be used as a basic for the creation of physical and digital anthropometric database. The list of measurements specified in this standard is intended to serve as a guide for practitioners in the field of clothing who are required to apply their knowledge to select population market segments and to create size and shape profiles for the development of all garment types and their equivalent fit mannequins. The list provides a guide for how to take anthropometric measurements as well as give information to clothing product development teams and fit mannequins manufacturers on the principles of measurement and their underlying anatomical and anthropometrical basis. This standard is intended to be used in conjunction with national, regional or international regulations or agreements to ensure harmony in defining population groups and to allow comparison of anthropometric data sets. Textile flow coverings are another area where BIF has done a remarkable work to boost India's exports to Western countries. To help us appreciate the scope of standardization of woolen products and textile flow coverings better, Mr. Dharamveer is here to tell us more. Recently, BIS has also come up with IS-17479-2020 carpet tiles made of polyamide nylon yarn which is a new product in the floor covering segment. This standard specifies the construction, particular and performance requirement of tufted carpet tiles made from the polyamide filament yarn blends, solution dyed, dope dyed, throw bulk continuous filament or partially oriented yarn root. Another standard IS5884 on hand tufted carpet has been published in 2020-20. This standard is a revision of the earlier version published in 1993 and prescribes the constructional particular and performance requirement of hand tufted carpets made from wool, man-made fibers or their blends. The requirements of primary backing cloth and 
secondary backing fabric have also been specified in this standard along with the requirement of pile height, pile weight, pile thickness and pile density which have the ultimate bearing on the carpet aesthetics. The tough withdrawal force has also been specified as a performance characteristics. Having learnt about the standards related to so many varieties of textiles, can you imagine the world of textiles without colours? Here again, BIS plays an important role in the segment of dye and auxiliaries and has recently ventured into the niche segment of natural dyes. The revival of natural dyes has happened mainly for two reasons. One, due to the harmful effect of synthetic dye, safer natural dyes are being preferred globally. Secondly, the ban on the use of azo dyes, which releases carcinogenic amines, has also brought back natural dyes into the limelight. In the recent years, BIS has published a series of standards relating to identification of natural dyes. Natural dyes are being used extensively for the dyeing of cotton, linen, silk and wool substrates. The first two standards in this series are IS 17084-2019 Natural Indigo and IS 17085-2019 Rubia or Madder. Indigo is the most popular natural dye which is widely used throughout the world. The entire denim industry is using indigo dye and produces bright blue shades on cotton, silk and wool with all-round fastness properties. The main intention of this specification is to identify the natural dye stuff from the synthetic analog which is usually used as adulterant for cost modifications and color enhancement purposes. The detection and identification of synthetic indigo and natural colorant indigo are conducted using kit method as given in the standard. Confirmatory tests can be carried out through TLC, HPTLC and HPLC by chromatographic FTIR and MNR spectroscopic techniques. The method for extraction of natural indigo dye from dyed swatches is also given in this standard. Similarly, Rubia cordifolia produces anthraquinone reddish orange dyes in root stems and leaves which has been used for dyeing textiles since ancient times. Both these standards prescribe identification procedures through chromatography and spectrography tests. Besides the stellar role that BIS plays in national standardization, it also proactively engages in the development of global standards. Let's hear more about this. Textile department of BIS is also representing the country in various technical committee of International Organization for Standardization ISO and actively associated with ISO TC 38 textiles, ISO TC 72 textile machinery and accessories, ISO TC 94 personal safety, protective clothing and equipment, ISO TC 133 clothing size system, size designation, size measurement methods and digital fitting. ISO TC 219 floor covering and ISO TC 221 geosynthetics. Apart from the aforementioned areas, textile department of BIS is also working on the new emerging areas in the technical field. Let us see what are these. Some of the emerging areas where BIS is working for standardization are smart textiles, NBC suitings, anti-G suits, microplastics from textile sources and animal welfare in the textile supply chain. Looking at the enormous work done by BIS in standardization in the field of textiles, this is a very short duration to discuss all the aspects. For further details and list of standards published, you may visit standardization portal on www.manakonline.in. All the indigenous standards are freely downloadable. Anybody can post their comments on these standards using their logging credentials. If you wish to become a member of any technical committee and extend your valuable contribution to this national standardization effort, you may reach www.manakonline.in and submit your request on standardization portal as it is everybody's contribution.